So recall that for rational inequalities, we're going to find the excluded values. We're going to solve the related equation. And then we're going to use those values to divide the number line into intervals and then test each interval using a test value to determine where the solution set is. Let's first find excluded values. These are going to be values for which the denominator becomes 0. If 2x equals 0, that would occur when x equals 0 divided by 2 or x equals 0. The same thing's going to occur here with 4x, that if x equals 0 be an excluded value. So excluded value, x equals 0. Now I need to solve the related equation, 1 over 2x plus 5 divided by 4x minus 1 equals 0. And the least common denominator of 2x and 4x, I could factor this out to 2 times 2. So the LCD is going to be, there's a 2 present once here, but twice here. And remember, I take each unique factor to the highest power that it's present. So I'm going to say 2 squared. There's an x present once here and once here. So it's 2 squared times x equals 4x. So the LCD is 4x. So multiplying here, 4x times 1 divided by 2x plus 4x times 5 divided by 4x minus 1 times 4x equals 0 times 4x. Canceling out common factors, this becomes a 2. 2 cancels out. X's cancel out. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus, 4x's cancel, leaving behind 5. This is negative 4x equals 0. 7 minus 4x equals 0. 7 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. That gives x equals 7 fourths. Or this could be rewritten as x equals 1 and 3 fourths. So that's my excluded value, and my solution to the related equation is x equals 1 and 3 fourths. So let's go down here, and I'm going to use this value and this value to divide up my number line. I have 0 here, and I have 1 and 3 fourths here. So I end up with three intervals, a, b, and c. And I need to test a point within each of these intervals. And if that value satisfies the inequality, I know that this interval is at least part of the solution set. For the first interval, so for a, I'm going to use, I'm going to let x equal negative 1. I need something less than 0. I'll let x equal negative 1. That's simple to work with. That's going to give me 1 over 2 times negative 1 plus 5 divided by 4 times negative 1 minus 1 is greater than 0. And let's see if this holds up. This gives me negative 1 half minus 5 fourths minus 1 is greater than 0. This is the same as saying negative 2 fourths just converting to a common denominator. Minus 5 fourths minus 1 is greater than 0. I actually don't even need to go farther. In fact, I even could have just looked at this and said, I've got a bunch of negatives. Those are not going to be greater than 0 when I combine them. So no, this is not valid. Therefore, A is not, that interval does not contain the solution set or part of the solution set. For B, I have values between 0 and 1 and 3 fourths, so I can use 1 as a test point, x equals 1. This is going to give me 1 over 2 times 1 plus 5 divided by 4 times 1 minus 1 is greater than 0, which is 1 half plus 5 fourths minus 1 is greater than 0. Uh, I can just convert this to 2 fourths plus 5 fourths minus 1 is greater than 0. And this is going to give me three, 5 fourths plus 2 fourths is going to give me 7 fourths. 
7 fourths is greater than 1, so when I subtract 1 from 7 fourths, I'm going to end up with 3 fourths. So this is going to give me 3 fourths is greater than 0. Even if I didn't figure this whole thing out, as soon as I saw that this is a positive number larger than 1, I know that when I subtract 1 from it, I'll get something positive, so it's going to be greater than 0. So this one's valid, therefore, yes for B. This does contain, this interval contains at least part of the solution set. For C, I'm going to go ahead and you, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to use 2 as my test point, x equals 2. This is going to give me 1 over 2 times 2 plus 5 over 4 times 2 minus 1 is greater than 0. So that's 1 fourth plus 5 eighths minus 1 is greater than 0. I need to find a common denominator here, so I'm going to convert 1 fourth to 2 eighths plus 5 eighths minus 1 is greater than 0. That's 7 eighths minus 1 is greater than 0. Well, 7 eighths minus 1 is going to leave negative 1 eighth is greater than 0, and that is not true. So C is not part of the solution set. Therefore, the solution for this possible solution, I'm going to say possible because we have to look back at excluded values, is 0 is, x is greater than 0, but it's less than 1 and 3 fourths. Now, let's look back up at excluded values. I cannot let x equal 0. That's an excluded value. But I'm okay here because x is greater than 0. So I'm covered, and this is my actual solution. This is valid. And just looking back to review, find your excluded values. x equals 0 is an excluded value. Then solve the related equation, the related rational equation. I did that by multiplying by the LCD, multiplying each term, getting rid of those fractions, then finding that x equals 1 and 3 fourths was the solution. And it wasn't an excluded value, so it was a valid solution. I used those two values, 0 and 1 and 3 fourths, to divide the number line into intervals, and then I tested each interval. I tested interval A and found that my test value did not satisfy the inequality. So that's not part of the solution set. I tested B using x equals 1 and found the inequality did hold up, so B contains part of my solution set. C, I tested, that value did not satisfy the inequality, so that is not part of the solution set. Therefore, the solution set is x is greater than 0 and less than 1 and 3 fourths. But remember, if you're working with greater than or equal to in the original, and you're, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to put an equals to here, you need to be careful that you don't encompass an excluded value as part of that. Okay, that concludes this lesson of educator.com on rational equations and inequalities.